fifth generation. Is this the best tablet for everyone? Let's find out. Hey guys, so it's your tech girl Mary and welcome back to our YouTube channel. As promised, doon sa ating iPhone SE 2022 review video, gagawan ko ng review of course yung bagong iPad Air. Alam nyo, the moment that Apple changed from the Intel processors to their own um, silicons like the new M1 chip for their first one, I'm talking about their Macs, hindi ko in actually that it will ever come down to this moment na even their tablets will adapt from them. So yeah, mamaya pag-uusapan natin yung um, M1 chip na yan na bago technically sa Air series. We only got two storage choices para sa iPad Air 5. The 64 GB cost 35,990 pesos while the 256 GB cost 44,990 pesos. And the iPad Air that we got right now has the 256 gig storage. By the way, may 5G models then ngayon ang iPad Air 5. Unlike last year na wala, we got 4G only. For the 5G model, we got 44,990 pesos for the lowest storage and 53,990 pesos for the 256 gig storage. And for reference and comparison na rin sa iPad Air doon sa previous iPad Pro na lumabas, which also has somehow the same specs na meron nito doon especially the M1 chip. Sa iPad Pro, kung maaalala nyo, just like what we have right now, we got the 11-inch and the 12.9-inch. We actually have four storage options for the Pro version, starting from 128 gig all the way up to 1 terabyte. And the cheapest iPad Pro na mabibili nyo as of the moment sa market is 45,990 pesos for the 11-inch 128GB storage. Mamaya, pag-uusapan natin, ano ba ang mas worth it sa kanila? Of course, para rin sa features na kailangan nyo and of course, for its price. By the way, no guys, what I got is in uh, purple. Actually, it comes in new colors now, hindi lang purple. It also now comes with starlight, um, pink, and of course, blue. May space gray din naman, but Alang alam ko hindi na to bago. Here we have the purple. Medyo hindi na ako excited guys kasi matagal-tagal ko nang ginagamit itong iPad Air. Again, I am reviewing it kaya naman din na pending yung iPad Pro ko kasi ito yung ginagamit natin the past few days. Aside from that, we also got here of course some paperwork and um unlike the iPhone SE na you previously saw, it comes with uh, two big Apple stickers. And since hindi naman cellular version yung binili natin, we don't have a panindot. And of course, as usual, we got here the USB Type-C to Type-C cable and of course, the charging brick. Somehow guys, I am glad kasi may charging brick pa rin tayo, no? Kasi alam naman natin that the iPhones now no longer comes with this one. And that, do take note, kung napanood yung ating Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Plus, yun din ay walang power brick na. Okay, design-wise, katulad ng iPhone SE 3rd uh, generation na nilabas nila, kasama nitong bagong iPad Air, there is really no change design-wise. So yes, they are bringing the exact same design na nakita nyo from the previous iPad Air 4. Not just the design, but also the dimensions. Parehas na parehas lang, kaya naman yung mga accessories ng inyong mga, of course, lumang iPad. Luma na ba yun? Hindi pa naman technically luma, but your old iPad Air or even your iPad Pro can still be used dito sa mga bagong iPad Air, which is somehow a good news. Honestly, no, hardware-wise, tatlo lang naman ang nagbago dito sa ating bagong iPad Air. Una-una is, of course, doble na yung kanyang RAM from the previous 4GB of RAM. We now are getting an 8GB of RAM. Pangalawa, no, we now are getting a 12 megapixels ultra-wide camera, which means pwede na natin gamitin yung center stage na talaga namang 
Um, of course, looking forward ako sa mga bagong iPads ngayon. And of course, they bump up the chipset to the new M1 chip na nakita nga natin dito sa Pro version nila na bagong labas lang din. Kaya naman din, ano, medyo mabenta talaga ang mga tablets ng Apple is because of their chipset nga na ginagamit nila sa kanilang mga laptops din. Everything else from the display size, the display specs are somehow identical pa rin from the iPad Air 4th generation. So yeah, there's really not much to say about the physical appearance of our new iPad Air. Pero ito yung gusto kong i-point out, of course, sa inyo na gusto ng very quick comparison doon sa iPad Pro na hindi naman nalalayo yung price point netong 256GB doon sa base ng iPad Pro. Okay, so ito na sila. Ang unang difference in terms of physical appearance is, of course, the speakers. We got a quad speaker setup sa iPad Pro which is why mas fuller and louder yung audio na lumalabas sa kanya. As with the new iPad Air, we got the same two speakers from last year. Hindi naman ako nagka-complain dito, guys. Honestly, though, um, it still is quite loud. And kung ako ang datanungin nyo, kung papipiliin ako halimbawa sa kanilang dalawa, I wouldn't really buy the Pro version just because of the additional two speakers. Next thing you will notice is, of course, the camera setup. Kung mapapansin nyo dito sa iPad Air, we still have a single camera setup. While dito sa Pro version, Technically, tatlo because of the LiDAR and of course, the ultra-wide camera. Kung ang pag-uusapan lang naman natin ay document purposes and of course, video calls, hindi masyadong big deal ito. Dahil we rarely, ako ha, ako na lang din, I rarely use my iPad for family photos, landscapes, or even, um, should we say, concert. <laughs> Another one is, of course, their USB-C port. Parehas naman silang USB-C, guys. But for the iPad uh, Pro kasi, I think this one has a Thunderbolt, which is why we can have faster data transfers, even use yung ating mga hard drives sa kanya, unlike dito sa iPad Air na merong usual USB-C port lang. Another difference of them is, of course, the Touch ID and the Face ID. Ako, no... Um, since ako ay naka-keyboard sa aking mga iPad, I prefer using yung ating Face ID for daily because of the keyboard. Para nga naman hindi ko na kailangang ilagay pa yung daliri ko just to unlock my iPad. But before dumating yung update, no, when working outside, working in a coffee shop, mas na-appreciate ko talaga yung beauty or beauty talo <laughs> yung usefulness ng Touch ID. It's not like it's a hassle kasi pwede ka naman ding i-enroll yung dalawa kong um, daliri sa kanya, kanan at kaliwa, kung ano yung mas ginagamit ko on different orientations. Time to talk about the display of the new iPad Air 5. Kung mapapansin nyo, bezel-wise, ganun pa rin siya, guys, but hindi siya as thin as we saw from the Galaxy Tab S8 series. Talaga namang mas manifest di hamak yung mga bezels natin sa tablet ng Samsung. The disappointing part with the iPad Air is of course, it remains at 60Hz refresh rate. Not like I'm complaining, we're talking about a not-so-flagship tablet from Apple. I know naman din that Apple knows how to make 60Hz right, but coming from an iPad Pro na sanay from the ProMotion display, it really is very noticeable. So yes, coming from my perspective, yung scrolling animations natin sa kanya is noticeable. And not just actually the scrolling, whenever I use the Apple Pencil, Dito sa iPad Air na to, ramdam ko rin na it's not as smooth compared to the iPad Pro. So yeah, kung manggagaling kayo sa inyong iPad Air 4th generation, you really won't notice any difference in terms of its display. But of course, if you are this person na hindi pa rin makipag-decide if you will be getting the Air or the Pro version, here are their differences na talaga namang ding um, very noticeable for me. Ito yung differences nila. The iPad Pro has a better display panel. Actually, it uses mini LED technology na nagpaproduce ng deeper blacks and may high refresh rate din siya up to 120Hz. And yes, it's noticeably brighter as well 
uh, outdoors. Sa outdoors ko lang naman ito napansin guys with the iPad Air. But indoors, wala kayong masyadong mapapansin in terms of brightness. Uh, that is because 600 nits ang kaya nitong iPad Pro while the iPad Air kaya naman niya up to 500 nits of peak brightness. So yes, the 100 nits difference is only noticeable outdoors. Now, if we were to talk about the performance of the iPad Air 5th generation and as well as the software, madali ko lang describe to sa inyo because performance and the software behavior is the same here on the iPad Air 5 2022 as the iPad Pro or the older 2020 iPad Air. Pero wala naman akong na-experience na animation stutter or application freezes. So yes, kahit na wala tayong promotion dito sa Air, still, everything works. And the one big reason talaga why I think you should choose this iPad Air 5 over the base model iPad and of course the iPad Mini, talaga namang hindi rin kayo madidisappoint. Lalo na if you really wanna take advantage of course of the M1 chip and kung medyo limited lang ang inyong budget. Isipin nyo, you will be able to experience the beauty or should we say the power of the M1 chip for as low as 35,000 pesos. Now, kung pag-uusapan natin ang battery performance ng iPad Air 5th generation, obviously may malaki siyang difference dito sa aking iPad Pro 11 inch because of its uh, lack of promotion display. But somehow, no, kahit na ibang chipset na yung meron itong iPad na to compared sa previous iPad Air 4, it still gave me the same battery performance. By the way, since we're not talking about the Pro tablet of Apple, ang charging speed nito guys ay medyo mabagal talaga. Um, again, this is only capable to be charged up to 18 watt. 15% lang yung nakuha kong battery juice sa kanya in 15 minutes. Ngayon, kung isa kayo dun sa mga taong bumibili ng iPad Air, of course, para magamit nyo yung mouse and keyboard between, of course, your iMac and your tablet, yes, it do support universal control. So, hindi kayo um, kailangang mag-worry if you are planning on, of course, combining your iPad Air to your Mac. Pero alam nyo, no, one good thing talaga na nagustuhan ko sa mga tablets ng Apple or not just their tablets but their products in general is that they really keep their devices up to date. Meaning, you will still get the latest software for many years. Something na most tablet manufacturers doesn't really offer us. Kaya naman din, hindi ko rin mabiblame yung iba if ever man that they will choose Apple tablets over Android. Anyway, munti ko nang makalimutan yung camera na iPad Air 5. Magpapaalam na sana ako. Wala kasi siya dito sa ating script. Nakalimutan ko. But anyway, itong, itong, itong iPad Air has a single 12 megapixel f1.8 camera and is capable of 4K video recording and a 12 megapixel front-facing camera. Sa totoo lang, yung rear camera nitong iPad Air 5, there's really not much to talk about. You are not getting any portrait mode or night mode dito sa iPad Air compared to the Pro version but honestly hindi ako magko-complain kasi hindi ko ginagamit itong mga features na to on my Pro ta uh, on my iPad the Pro. Pero ito lang yung masasabi ko no, in fairness guys, yung camera na 12 megapixel sa likod performed better than the iPad Air 4 probably because of its new M1 processor. Kung hindi masyadong impressive yung rear camera, I am impressed naman sa front facing camera nitong iPad Air it actually lets you record videos as well using the wide and the ultra wide angle. And of course, sa mga video applications like um, FaceTime or Zoom, pwede natin gamitin yung feature na center stage na wala tayo from the previous iPad Air. This is not the kind of feature na pwede natin makuha kapag tayo ay nag-update ng ating mga iPads. They really make it exclusive to their newer ones. So yes, if I were to describe the camera UI, it's very simple, nothing really, you know, compared to the iPhones or the iPad Pro. It's useful, it's functional, sakto lang, kung baga. So yeah, sa totoo lang, no, medyo matagal-tagal na rin naman tayong nagre-review ng mga tablet ng Apple. Almost every year, may mga bago silang tablet. 
from iPad, of course, Vanilla. Um, we also got the iPad Mini. We also got the iPad Air. Itong nire-review natin. And of course, their Pro version. So, technically, may apat silang klase ng tablet. So, sa totoo lang, kung ang klase ng workflow na meron kayo ay taking notes, filling out forms, or kaya naman kayo ay nagsisketch, sa tingin ko, no, talaga namang mas ideal bumili ng um, iPad ngayon kisa ng laptop. It also gives you access to most applications na exclusive lang din sa App Store. So yes, kung kailangan nyo lang naman din ng tablet, especially for consuming content, sa tingin ko itong Pro version, it's really more of a luxury option kasi I do think more than enough na ang 35,000 pesos or should we say 35,990 Uh, pesos to spend on a gadget. Lalong-lalo na ngayon, no, maraming kaliwat kanan na bagong labas na mga tablets, smartphones. So, hindi ideal talaga bumili ng sobrang mamahal na, of course, tablet ngayon. Pero, syempre, kung bibili kayo ng 256 gig na iPad Air 5th generation, sa totoo lang, ano, I'd rather get the iPad Pro base, which is the 128 gig. Again, we're talking about a 256 gig storage configuration. Dahil kung 64 gig ang inyong option, hindi na to dapat pag-usapan pa. Yun na lang ang bilhin nyo. Dahil yun naman ang pasok sa budget nyo. So yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Actually, for our review of the iPad Air 5th generation, somehow sana um, worth it ang pag-aantay nyo dito sa video natin. Again, By the way, <laughs> before natin i-end yung video, I am actually selling the iPad Air. So, follow nyo na lang yung ating shop that may about this time. Because um, I will be posting this. If wala na, it's already probably sold. It's your tech girl Mary and see you on our next video. Bye guys!